Friends, welcome to Nepal, the hiking and trekking capital of the world. In today's video, we want to bring you along on a journey as we attempt to hike one of the best long distance hikes in the world. And we are gonna try to make this journey happen on a shoulder season, which means that there's probably not gonna be any crowds. So it's gonna be as pure as possible. But at the same time, the monsoon season is just around the corner, which means that heavy rainfall and landslides can end our trek at any given time. And just as it is with every great story, let me start by introducing you the main characters of today's journey. German music starts playing. This is Julius, an engineer and a brave traveler from Germany. And in our team, he played the role of lead engine and a pathfinder. Second up, Liso. Being a doctor, she took it to herself to look after our health. But just as important was her role as a model, making this video much more pleasant to watch for all of us. Go, Liso, go. And lastly, as the beautiful and mesmerizing main character, we have the world famous Annapurna circuit trek. Almost every list of the world's best hikes includes Annapurna. This diverse and amazing journey through Himalayas that goes up to almost five and a half kilometers of elevation has for long been in our bucket lists. Oh, and I, the dude whose voice you're currently hearing, am Joe, my job in the team was to make bad jokes, so you might be hearing quite a few of them. What sound does a sad hiker make? But now, let's start from the very beginning, to give you a whole picture what it takes to hike one of the world's best trails. Step one of the hike, preparation. We have made it to Bukhara. But now we're gonna go and get permit for the track we're gonna do. First part of this meant paperwork. Many of the hikes here in Nepal require permits and passes. Ten minutes later, <laughs> we got two permits. The ladies were super nice and uh, they cost us 3,000 Nepalese, so like 22 euros. And well, the second part of preparation was packing. This was actually surprisingly easy. The whole route of Annapurna is actually quite well equipped. Shopping is the best cure for a bad day. All kinds of goods and stuffs. And there was toilet paper and cola. <laughs> so the only things you really need to bring are warm clothes, head torch, water filter to defend yourself from diarrhea on the mountain. And if you worry as much as we do, then snacks to feed a small family for at least a week. I guess this is the end of preparation. It's about six in the morning and now the second leg of our journey begins, which means that now we have to somehow get to the beginning of the hike. I know, step two might sound easy, but if you have ever been to Nepal, then you know that traveling from one place to another is one of the most stressful parts of visiting this country. And this is kind of how it went. First, we took a taxi to a local bus stop. Secondly, found a bus to the city we needed to go, Beshi Sahar. How much is the ticket? <laughs> then, we almost got kicked out of the bus because we had the audacity to ask the bus driver why we had to pay almost double the price of a ticket compared to others. Just asked the ladies in the back and they said the correct bus price is 500. I don't really want to pay extra just because we're white. Next up followed probably five most uncomfortable hours of my life. Can anyone count how many people are in the bus? There was twice as many people as there were seats. I guess when there's 26 people on a bus, just the pressure on the tire is too big. So we're just airing up the tires for the rest of the journey. And I literally had to sit cross-legged as my legs did not fit side by side. Of course, the bumpy roads didn't help either. 
and honestly, I was so happy when this part of the journey ended. We have made it to Pesi Shahar. It was over five hours from up in a small bus. <laughs> then follow the quick drink to celebrate the fact that we were still alive. And then another three hours in a local jeep through winding mountain roads and roadworks. And then we were there. So we made it. Uh, almost like eight hours of traveling in buses and now jeeps. This is gonna be the guest house we spend our first night. But uh, how it works here on the track is that if you eat dinner and breakfast at your accommodation, then the room will be free. The place we ended up in was much nicer than what I expected before the hike. Fancy private bathroom. Beautiful views. TV, the best kind of TV. Good food. And we even had time to walk a few steps to kind of prepare ourselves for the next part of the journey. <sighs> Just coming up few steps up the hill and I'm realizing that I might not be ready for this hike. Ooh. I'm not ready either. As the last thing of this day, a happy accident. And we got a friend, Julius. Hi. <laughs> he just walked in, he's doing the same track as well, we'll see. Maybe we hike to together tomorrow. Oh Who no, knows? tomorrow it's gonna be Julius starting you speed. <laughs> <laughs> well, just like this, we had made it to the third part of the journey. The part where we finally started walking. The day started with a big breakfast, and then we were off. Let's go! Let's go! For us a big day. Julius has already done one day before, so he doesn't really care. It's just another day on a track. <laughs> but our journey starts from here, and I guess at least for the next seven days, probably a little bit more, we're gonna try to hike around Annapurna mountain range. Woo! first days of such big hikes are usually magical. It's a time when you haven't yet realized how heavy and uncomfortable is your backpack. Just needed a small break for my shoulders and I saw locals doing it. And even your shoes haven't yet realized that it's about time to make some new blisters on your feet. And around this time, we slowly started to realize the positive side of visiting this track at the end of May, between hiking and rainy season. The track is not crowded at all as well. It's completely empty. We haven't seen any other hikers. Okay. Even yesterday, I, I didn't see a single hiker. Yeah. Little did we know that this shoulder season would soon enough also bring a lot of trouble. The weather forecast doesn't look too good. It shows a lot of rain. And rain in a mountain literally means trouble. It can cause landslides, it can block off roads. Of course, everything around us felt new and interesting as well. We trekked through small mountain villages full of smiling locals. <laughs> Hiked on grasslands, cliff sides, and even tropical bamboo forests. It was a true privilege being able to enjoy nature in such manner. Looks like the whole village was included in building this part of the road over there. But it quickly became clear that maintaining such routes requires hard labor of hundreds, if not thousands of locals. Doesn't matter, man or woman, locals just carry everything on their backs on those mountains. Namaste. Dear first day of the hike, why, oh why, do you need to end so soon? I guess that's gonna be our guest house for the second night. It's the same thing that if you order food from here, then the accommodation is included. Five thirty, second morning of walking. 
No, six o'clock actually. On longer hikes, second and third day are usually the ones that set the rhythm for the whole journey. It's almost like you start developing a routine for the coming days and weeks. For us, it meant heavy breakfast. Thank you, sir. Then, filtering water for the coming day and a bit of complaining before we could start with walking. I'll be honest with you, the shoulders are hurting. That's why all of this here. And, and uh, the legs are hurting a little, but I guess that's all part of the fun, eh? A regular guide on a track costs $25 a day. But if you have a guide like us, you can only pay in scratches and cuddles. Yet when talking about the track itself, then those early days are what make Annapurna circuit such a diverse journey. The track at this point still runs on quite a low altitude. And so in a matter of hours, the trail can go from a warm and tropical forest to barren riverside and then again to something totally different. The leafy trees are gone and evergreens are just dominating the ecosystem. It's quite awesome all the pines and spruces. And after a day of walking, there's the evening routine, which consists of finding a guest house. I guess tonight we have something more fancy again. It's called the Roy Royal Hotel and the views from here are just incredible. Then eating a lot of food. When you're hiking and especially in the altitude, it's just, you can go and go and go and the food here looks amazing. Then eating a little bit more. Apple pie with custard. And occasionally taking a shower before heading to bed around 8 o'clock. Just as we were getting ready to take a shower, we heard that only a few hundred meters that way, there's natural hot springs. Not sure how it's gonna look like, because they gave us a bucket, so it's probably not the big pool, but we're gonna go and check it out. Natural springs, guys. This here used to be a whole hot springs complex, but the recent landslide had destroyed the whole thing. Landslides are just part of life here, and luckily, there were still few places in the ground where hot water was coming out. One of the holes was too cold, the other one way too hot. So for the first 10 minutes or so, I played the role of a bath boy, delivering hot water to Julius and cold water to Liesl. But finally, I got my share of the hot and relaxing bath as well. You can probably <laughs> tell it by that, but on this elevation, it's getting a little bit colder. Today we're gonna cross the elevation of three kilometers. We're at 2.7 at the moment. And in the evening we wanna be at 3.3. In my own personal opinion, I would say that the fourth and fifth day on this hike are probably the most beautiful, but also the hardest. Exhibit number A, two people who are not afraid of heights. Exhibit B, one that is. Was it the best part of the trail so far? By far. It's, 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 the best it's, part of the trail, you missed everything. I, I heard the view from there is better than from Everest. Bestest of views. These are my friends, guys. It's the time when you slowly start to feel the altitude. Yet it also seems that after every hard climb, there is something amazing and gorgeous to be discovered. It seems to be one of the most common jobs around here. They're breaking rocks because everything is built out of those rocks. Houses, roads, like all the fortifications. And these guys, <laughs> they were all like 13, 14 years old, so still teenagers. For our group, Upper Bizang was one of such special places. I would even say that this was the place where we truly realized that we are in the Himalayas. Amazing! <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe it! Over there, inside the clouds, 
first view on Annapurna too. It's almost 8,000 meters and like we thought those were high, but then you look up there. It's almost impossible to put in words how amazing it feels to see those giants with my own eyes. Their size, beauty and elegance just makes it hard to concentrate on anything else. It's so hard to eat. Just the clouds are playing over there. And Annapurna 4 and, and 2 are showing itself like one by one. Yet there is one more thing that changes as soon as the mountains begin. And this, surprisingly, is the religion. Although Nepal is mainly a Hinduistic country, then in the mountains, Buddhism seems to be the dominant theme. And honestly, the calm and preserved Buddhist ways actually go together very well with these majestic mountains. Every morning all the locals light up uh, this evergreen tree and it smells so good. I think it has to do with shooing away bad spirits, but it makes the whole village smell amazing. It almost feels like Buddhism was designed for such unique places. But well, Buddha was born in Nepal after all. So yes, this part of the hike is truly magical. But as I said, it was also most challenging. Rain covers on. Shall we? We shall. Suddenly, just after passing one of the many beautiful mountain villages, it's starting raining. Not a huge fan of the rain, but the scenery today, the whole day, has been absolutely amazing. At first, it didn't seem like much, but bit by bit, it got worse and worse. I don't even know what's falling out of the sky anymore. It's, it's not rain, because it hits you differently. And it's not snow, because it doesn't stay on the ground. <laughs> For hours, we kept on fighting the weather through cold grasslands and muddy mountainsides that honestly scared the living crap out of me. I hate those places the most. You can see that there's been a landslide and it's all mud. Thanks to the rain now. Until we got to this point in the evening. Everything I own is wet and I basically have clothes that are on are wet and clothes that were in the bag, the warmest clothes that I have, they are also wet, but like because the bag leaked somehow and... And the next point we're gonna hike is gonna be over 4,000 meters, so everything that's even slightly wet is gonna freeze. Things really were not looking good. But we will decide what happens next. Once the sun, sun rises again. So, see you in the morning. Bye. Last night was rough. And we're heading back. But luckily, not in a bad way. Uh, just the things didn't dry. And so we redid our plans a little. And today, we're just gonna spend the whole day hiking up to one ice lake. It's like 4.6 thousand elevation, so it's gonna be a hell of a hike, but it's very good for acclimatization <laughs> and uh, also it gi gives extra time for our things to dry. Many trekkers take time off in Manang before going further to higher altitudes. Hike to the ice lake was a really fun adventure, but for the sake of the story, I will summarize it. First, we saw a dog with a leg in his mouth. Really not sure if that was a good omen. That's a leg. Luckily, it wasn't a hiker's leg. It was a cow's. Then we filtered some water from the stream. You can't do that. Had yak cheese and fresh bread for breakfast. And then casually climbed about 1.2 kilometers of elevation. What's the goal for the day? Keep positive and keep moving. Yeah. It's a lot harder than it sounds. I don't know what it feels like to be on cloud nine. We're currently on cloud not one and it feels cold and wet. <laughs> Just like somebody's breathing on the back of your neck. And yes, finally, we made it to the lake. We have made it to 4,600 meters. Woo! 
I was actually expecting a bit more ice. And since we made it up, celebratory piece of yak cheese. For you. But still, totally worth it. When returning from the lake, we got scammed by a tea salesman. Walked by the restaurant before and they told us that come and support the locals and buy at least one tea. We bought three teas and it's like the most expensive tea of my life. Rookie mistake, but the sadness didn't last long. It was nothing a good piece of cake could not fix. Lake and cake. The most important thing of trekking and mountaineering is planning your route. <laughs> Day number six. And it's a little bit weird because first time it's like clear, clear in the morning. All the mountains are showing themselves. There's four of us now. Woohoo! It's fascinating how easy it is to make friends on such adventures. By this time, Julius had almost become as close as family. And Charlotte, our new friend from France, also became part of the team very quickly. With new friends and interesting conversations, next days almost seemed to fly by. And the trek truly blessed us for those sixth and seventh day as well. For the first time, it was clear skies without a hint of rain. Lisa, what's today's goal? <laughs> to be positive and keep moving. <laughs> Stay strong. <laughs> Stay strong. <laughs> also, the landscape up here was quite different. At around four kilometers of elevation, there is no more trees. We took breaks on beautiful grasslands. Saw herds of yucks grazing on the mountainside. I actually thought they would be bigger, but they're like small and super hairy cows with weirdly big horns. And after a relatively short hiking day, even climbed more to adjust with the altitude. At 4.2 kilometers of height, all of us felt lightheaded, and we were afraid that this feeling was far from over. The road, after all, kept only going higher from here. The seventh day on the trek. What's the goal for the day? Be positive and keep moving. Make it to high camp. Make it to high camp. <laughs> Healthy. <laughs> on the next day, we needed to climb another 600 meters in elevation to reach the high camp. The one big surprise in this, this camp was that although we started quite early then, before us, hundreds of locals went on the mountains to look and scan for a special kind of caterpillar. It's a little bit weird, but it's used in Chinese medicine. And so they go up there in the morning and they spend whole day digging up the mountainsides, looking for this one animal to sell them. <sighs> yeah, not sure how do we feel about it. Most of the time, we walked on a narrow path on the side of the mountain. In some places, landslides had wiped away the roads. On others, the rocks were still falling. Holy crap, I couldn't film it, but off that wall, just a few quite big rocks came loose and they flew between Lisa and Charlotte. That was lucky. On such altitude, every moment requires effort. And I think it's the first time in seven days when even Julius was struggling to catch his breath. Nevertheless, by afternoon, we made it to the high camp. It felt like a calm before the storm. Lizzo. We all knew what was coming the next day, yet still try to be positive and stick to our routine. Welcome to 4,900. Viewpoint of high camp. We woke up at four and started our ascent at 4.30 in the morning. Room is just full of positivity. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing left. Every, everywhere just grunts in silence. <laughs> 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 4.30 in the morning, 
and the main part of the adventure begins heading to Tarongla Pass. The track led us through steep rocky mountains, beautiful snowy valleys. And this here is the part of the journey that really makes you appreciate the team you're here with. We cheer to each other. You can do it, few more steps. Few more steps. You did it. <laughs> and try to motivate ourselves through this, the hardest part of the hike. In nomine Fili, Patre, Spirito Santo. First son of the day. But in a weird way, the hardest part of this journey is also the one when you realize why people love hiking so much. Up here, it doesn't matter if your hat looks funny or glasses don't really fit. It's a place where all worries and insecurities vanish. And what remains is almost like meditation, just one step after another. And then you arrive. <coughs> 5,400 meters of elevation, perfect weather, and realization that the people you accomplished it with now almost feel like a family. Then breakfast on top of the world. And from there, it's just downhill. And then, after walking hours downhill, it all becomes clear. The whole experience comes back to you. And for me, that's where I realized that there's no doubt this trek deserves a place in the list of world's best hikes. It's diverse and beautiful in nature. Rich and interesting in culture. Challenging for the body. And if anybody asks, then end of May is absolutely the best time of the year for this hike. Yes, at times it might be a little wet, but hiking one of the world's most beautiful treks without crowds of people is truly humbling and an amazing experience. Friends, thank you for joining us on this adventure to such a beautiful and unique place. <laughs> of course, special thank you to Julius and Charlotte for making this such a wonderful experience. And we hope to see you all back on the channel next Thursday in a little bit less than a week with some new adventures from Nepal. Take care. And bye.